I get lots of comments from Muslims who reject the Hadith, not just weak Hadiths, anything I quote from the Hadith, even if it's classified as strong by Muslim scholars. Let's look at an example. Here's a recent comment on my video about Muhammad telling his followers to drink camel urine. Nowhere in the Quran says these, that camel urine heals, etc., etc. All is written in Hadith. We Muslim believe Quran because this is the word of God, and Hadith was written after the death of Prophet Muhammad. Therefore, all the Hadith cannot be true because it's written by man. Notice that he wrote, the Hadith cannot be true because it's written by man. So, following this reasoning, if I write 2 plus 2 equals 4, it's not true because it's written by man. Strange rules Muslims come up with when they're trying desperately to defend Muhammad. Now, to be fair, there is a serious minority position in Islam which rejects the Hadith as authoritative. I had a radio discussion with one of them once. His name is Hamza Abdul Malik. Their position is that the Quran is the word of Allah and contains everything you need to know about how to submit to Allah. Muhammad, from this perspective, was basically just a mailman, someone who passes on a message. If someone sends you a letter, you don't praise and glorify the mailman for delivering it, so why are Muslims focusing so much on Muhammad? So there is an intellectual position that rejects the Hadith as authoritative, but Muslims who take this position are regarded as heretics by most Muslims. Why are they regarded as heretics? Because other Muslims are convinced that some of Islam's most fundamental teachings and practices come from the Hadith, and that the Quran can't really be understood without the Hadith. Orthodox Islam is built upon the twin foundations of the Quran and the Hadith. That's why I find it so fascinating to see a rapidly growing community of Muslims in the comments section who reject the Hadith. But this new generation of Hadith-denying Muslims don't reject the Hadith because they've studied the Hadith and the Quran and Islamic doctrine and concluded that they should reject the Hadith. They reject the Hadith simply because they're so embarrassed by what we find in the Hadith. Let's go through my response to see why they've got a problem. I begin by pointing out the obvious inconsistency. The Hadith cannot be true because it's written by man. Your comment is written by man, so I guess it can't be true. Nice job refuting yourself. More to the point, the Quran commands Muslims to submit to Muhammad's decisions, Quran 465. Muhammad's decisions are found in the Hadith, not in the Quran. So you can't obey the Quran without obeying Muhammad in the Hadith. The Quran also declares that Muhammad is the pattern of conduct for Muslims, Quran 3321. Muhammad's conduct is recorded in the Hadith, not in the Quran. Islam's most basic practices come from the Hadith, not from the Quran. For instance, Muslims are required to recite the Shahada as the first pillar of Islam. The Shahada is found in the Hadith, not in the Quran. The second pillar of Islam is praying five times per day. But the Quran only says to pray three times per day. Five daily prayers are found in the Hadith, not in the Quran. All of this leaves you with an interesting dilemma. On the one hand, if you reject the Hadith, you have to reject Islam's most basic practices, and you can't even obey the Quran. On the other hand, if you accept the Hadith, you have to accept Muhammad's teachings, which you clearly find revolting, e.g. drinking camel urine. Let me know what you decide. Now, those are just a few of the problems that arise for Muslims if they reject the Hadith. There are more. There are plenty of passages in the Quran that make no sense without examining the historical background in the Hadith. We don't even know how the Quran was put together without going to outside sources. But my response draws attention to a problem for the new generation of Quran-only Muslims. The older generation of Quran-only Muslims adopted a particular theological position, and they accepted the consequences of denying the Hadith. The new generation of Quran-only Muslims say that they reject the Hadith, even though their beliefs and practices come from the Hadith. In other words, they pray five times per day without realizing that this comes from the Hadith. They recite the Shahada without realizing that this comes from the Hadith. Informed Quran-only Muslims, people like Hamza Abdul Malik, don't pray five times per day. They don't recite the Shahada. I asked Hamza if he recites the Shahada. He said, nah, it's shirk. It's shirk because it includes Muhammad in a creed alongside Allah. So there are consequences for Muslims who reject the Hadith. If our Muslim friends want to reject the Hadith, that's fine with me. But we need to explain to them what that entails. If they're going to reject the Hadith, 
they need to reject all of the teachings and practices that come from the Hadith and not from the Quran. And when they do that, there goes most of Islam.